Matt, we're here at the London Film Festival launch. You've got your film here this year. Tell me all about it. It's your first one, isn't it, in fact, in the LFF? First one here, yeah. It's called Spike Island, and it's a coming-of-age story about five kids in a band at the time of the Stone Roses were at their peak. And they desperately want to go and see the Stone Roses at Spike Island, which is going to be the biggest gig of the year, but they can't get tickets. So they have to blag, lie, borrow, whatever they can do to get over the barrier and through and to go see the heroes. Now, is that kind of a spirit you've had yourself? Yeah, no, for sure. I remember being at college and having to climb over the walls of Glastonbury and all the rest of it, which obviously is not, I wouldn't recommend to anyone. I think, especially now, the scooter's got a bit better. But I remember having to try and sneak over. There was a ladder we managed to find the first time I ever went. And it was, it's all part of the buzz of the festival. So does that kind of come across in the film? How do you bring across that buzz in the movie? Because it's a very, because a live experience, isn't it? Well, the Stone Roses, I mean, I never got to see them the first time round. And seeing them now at Heaton Park, or we saw them at the View Festival a couple of weeks ago, it was amazing, you know, I never thought I'd get to see them live. But um, trying to recreate that on a tiny budget and trying to do, you know, trying to recreate 30,000 people in a field on peanuts is, is tricky, but I think we kind of pulled it off. It's having spent most of my life going to festivals, we were really concerned to try and get it as accurately you know, as possible. And we shot a lot of stuff from the, you know, we, we used footage from the time, we showed it to the designer. And I think, I think we kind of pulled it off with a bit of VisFX magic. I think it kind of works. And what is it about movies like this one that you really love making and bringing to the big screen? Well, since I read the script, um, which was a few years ago, actually, I, I wanted to do it. But I'd just done a film called Sex, Drugs and Rock and Roll, which again was a music film. And even though the two of them can't really be, couldn't be more different, I just felt, actually, if it's my next film, it just feels like that's what I'll end up doing for the rest of my life. I was already being sent every music film, you know, through my agent. So I just, I was like, I'm not sure if it's the right timing. And I went and did another film, Ashes, with Ray Winston and Jim Sturgis, which is, which couldn't really be more different. It's a, it's a thriller, it's a road movie. So then that almost felt like the antidote. Then I could come back and do this. So yeah, it's been it's been great. So it's worked out quite well for you. Then you had a little bit of a rest from the music, and you're back with renewed vigour. Right, exactly. I mean, and the same way with documentaries and music videos, it's great to do a drama and then go off and do a documentary. And every time you you finish on a drama, you never want to see another film set. You never want to see another actor. You never want to see, see another crew member. And you go off and work with real people for a year. By the end of that, you never want to see another real person again in your life. You want to hang out with fake people in the industry, you know, like me. So I, yeah, it's been it's been good. And the same with music videos. It's just each thing feels like a reaction, like an anti to the last thing you know and I think for me it's the only way of trying to keep yourself fresh so what have you know you obviously worked on a number of films now what have you learned from them that you've brought to Spike Island do you think well I, I think the main my training ground was with Revolution Films with Michael Winterbottom and Andrew Eaton's company and um, I started there it was the first job I ever had in the industry and because they're very prolific and small and passionate about what they do and passionate about giving people a leg up into the industry, then um, you know, that, was, that was really my film school. So I, in that sense, every time I've, I've uh, worked on another film, I try to create a similar sense of a family, of trying to help people into their first job or second job, and just taking risks on people. You know? So I think that's the main thing I've learned from them. Do you kind of tend, are you one of these filmmakers who also kind of takes some of the crew onto the next film with you as a kind of, like you mentioned, like a kind of family? Yeah, right. I, th I think the tricky thing every time you're starting up a new film is everyone has their own lives. They go off into their other jobs. But if I could keep working with this group of filmmakers the rest of my life, I'd be very happy. You know, they're, they're amazing. I think you spend a long time trying to learn the shorthand, trying to hang out with people and, and understand you know, your likes and your dislikes and the kind of vibe you want on set. And it takes a while to foster that. And then, you know, you have to wait for the money for the next next film and people aren't necessarily available and every time you start with a new person as good as they might be you're kind of starting again from scratch so yeah if I, if I could carry on working with the family we've created for the rest of my life would be very happy. So what's next for you if you can even think about that after you've just finished this one? Well I was, I was very much hoping we'd be going on to a TV series called GB84 which is the next book by David Peace who did the Red Riding trilogy um, so we're waiting to hear back um, you know so so watch this space if that's the next thing I get to do it would be amazing because it's the best script I've ever read. So how would that work would that be like a one-off or would it be a mini-series? Well, ideally I think we're hoping to do it as a four-part TV series um, so we'll see you know I think it's the kind of film that you know kind of TV that we should be making in this country. It's kind of challenging, edgy, and uh, and about something. It's about you know kind of morality, and it's about kind of the last time that things were there was a real kind of clash between the left and right in this country. But it's all in the guise of a thriller, in the way that David Peace can kind of really anatomise a country, but actually make it incredibly entertaining. And so, who would you like to see? Who would you like to be directing in that? Well, I'm, I'm hoping we, it's, a, it's a big cast. I mean, there's, there, I've got a kind of dream list that we've, we've put together, but I'd love to work again with Jim Sturgis, if he'd have me, uh, who um, was in the last film we did in Ashes um, as, as one of the miners in it.